Schalke finishing above Dortmund for the first time since 2018 caused a lot of conversations. The reason for Dortmund's struggles? It's gotta be Kareem Adeyemi. I'm sure if I was his manager, me and him, we wouldn't get along. Wow, I think a little bit embarrassing. With Dortmund needing a new boss and no European football, it would be a perfect opportunity to retool and turn them back around. Why are you looking at Joaquin Crew? I know he looks a little psychotic, but he's no traitor. We'll get to Dortmund when we face them later on, but both of us start off hot. The previous campaign's runner-up for manager of the season had to make some big transfers, and the most expensive was Michel Pelletier for 25 million plus bonuses. He wasn't ready to start in my opinion, but Jens's preseason injury gave Kovacevic an opportunity. Next up, after losing to his club last year, Alan Jung arrived for 8.25 million. This guy is a prodigy playmaker who is good defensively. The final one at the moment for under 15 mil, a man from Brazil named Gabriel Duarte Correa. Gabriel Duarte Correa. I planned to play him as a camp due to his 11 pace, but as the fixtures went on, that improved. So maybe next year, we'll have a lethal striker on our hands. It was a tough start to the campaign, hosting RB Leipzig on night one. However, with the odds on favor to achieve the top scorer's cannon, Nelson Wiper backed the media's prediction with a brace. Granted, there was some help. The challenges kept arriving with an away trip to the Bay Arena. Our opening two opponents were above us on the season preview, but as the odds showed previously, those clearly don't matter. Luca joined Wiper in the fun with a brace of his own in only 16 minutes. Wiper 2. Go on another counter attack, Wiper. It's just him. Him. Two on one. Oh, he's too fast for them. I am him. Boom! While Top closed it out, handing out an emphatic 4 1 win. We were having a party and it turned into a bender with a few newly promoted clubs. Duisburg first with Luca finding a second brace and Wiper grabbing a goal himself. Something to note is that we probably bought their best player named Niels Rosa, a promising defensive midfielder. However, he was meant to be Chernikov's understudy until the I also had Riedel who could play there, but after the transfer window shut, he suffered an ACL injury. Yet our form wasn't affected, and with the oh so long return of Hamburg back to the Bundesliga, we beat them 3-1 with another Luka brace, and we Draogo joining the fun. To wrap up a fifth victory in a row, Osmani's brace secured that versus Werder Bremen. However, Dortmund kept up, and actually won their first seven games. We could only manage six. As a draw to Hoffenheim occurred, thanks to a late long shot. Thankfully, Feifau Bay finally dropped points with a donut to Leipzig, meaning a win versus Gladbach puts us on top on goal difference. Unfortunately, that wouldn't happen, with a second minute shot from Raquel May somehow finding the net. While we did respond with a penalty, terrible marking, and the box turning into a game of pinball led to the eventual winner. Thankfully, we were given an additional opportunity to go on top with Dortmund losing to Köln in their next match. Unlike last time, we took advantage, but not without hard work. Wolfsburg opened the encounter, but we responded with a Schallenberg slobber knocker and Osmani stealing the ball from the defender's blind side to hand us first place. Still a long way to go until the end, and unlike Beifau Bay, we had Europe to focus on. The league phase where we played eight fixtures went very well, seeing us place in fourth undefeated and off to the round of 16. Notable moments included defeating AC Milan, which was the club that Zerbi won too, Wiper with 5 against Bosnia's Zrinski Mostar, and the debut of Young Min's son. You right from Arsenal? He's the same for you? He's the same for Ari? I know he went through the Saudi Arabia pipeline and money can make you do wild things, but that's crazy that he actually went there. Regardless, he arrived in late January, and there has been a lot of action since we last left off. I can't explain this, but we clearly don't like the DFB Pokal. This brought on our first run of bad form. On match day 10, Dortmund defeated Bayern, putting the pressure on us to reclaim the throne. We visited Frankfurt, hoping to achieve our plan. Yet Hugo Larsson running unmarked and David Washington scoring a cheeky rebound brought forth this setback. You knew it was bad when we drew Lugano in the Europa League, followed by another stalemate, this time with Freiburg. The top four remained tight, but there were a few teams missing. Yeah, what about last year's Bundesliga winner Stuttgart?
It's easy to play well when you don't have European football, but add those games and you got yourself a tricky situation. As Christian Fuchs once said, it's incredibly difficult to play in the Champions League on Wednesday night. Having all that adrenaline coursing through your veins while playing on the biggest stage in football and then coming home and trying to fall asleep so you can recover and resume your normal training schedule for the weekend league matches. That seemed to explain Stuttgart's situation. And then they had to visit us just to receive a five-star beatdown with Osmani and Widraogo cooking specifically. Their hero, Christian Fiel, was sent packing. Still listed as a favorite personnel, although you hate to see something incredible tainted. So Bayern are ninth place. <laughs> with them becoming quite inconsistent over the years, Tool finally led them to Champions League glory with a penalty shootout victory over Arsenal. But cracks are being shown. Key players of the previous decade began to leave for greener pastures, or greener bills. And the replacements, while good, were either not up to the previous standard, or just not used. That's why getting our first win versus them felt like a significant switch in Bundesliga power. Who knows how long this will last for, but you have to swing when the head is open. The biggest Revier derby in years. Separated by two points, we faced off with a new manager, Pellegrino Matarazzo. Having to now deal with frustrating five-back formations seemed like an increasing trend in Germany. Yet, yeah, we initially did well. Carrera found a great ball to Widra Ogo, however, he couldn't beat Kobo. Then, with three passes, Dortmund got into our final third, and Pelletier allowed Adiemi too much space, seeing him tuck home the opener. That must have been a lucky shot, since we let him through again, which he skied. We were a mess and couldn't string two passes together. When we finally got our heads out of our asses, Widraogo was sent through once more, but completely flubbed it up. The second half was quieter than Old Trafford on a European night, as nothing occurred. The yellow wall extended their lead on us. Add another frustrating loss to the list with Ward Cajera's red card before halftime against Bobo. We tried to hold on, but Poheta made sure that wouldn't happen. A couple more wins brought the Hinrunda to an end, with us still in a Champions League spot. Unfortunately, we were 8 points behind Borussia Dortmund. The new year came in with the attempt to build ourselves back up. So Leverkusen at home saw us concede first. Happy New Year! We weren't deterred, as Grimal was bold enough to take a long shot. He obviously didn't score, but our Danish wonder kid Jung had more conviction, smacking the bar and the ball crossing over the line. We were taking control of this. But the half arrived. Not long after the restart, Schick was sent in. And it didn't cross the line. Luck was with us, as 10 minutes later, Carrera was found, and his cross was parried into Wiper's butt, with Carius having no chance. A unique game winning goal. Despite that, we were still 8 points out of reach, and with RB Leipzig next, many predicted it was either them or us in this title challenge. We're in their box. Ooh, no, never mind. Wait, back, almost in their box. Jung? Jung! Second game in a row with a goal azo. The Tin Cans had me wondering what they could do now. Grab that. How did you miss the ball, Montipo? Montipo's massive mistake caused their confidence to spiral from 100 to zero, spreading across the team swiftly as Grimal decided to make a one-time pass to Amos to give Leipzig the lead. I didn't even want to include Carrera's awful throw. Danny almost smacking the bar concluded their danger for the first half. We needed a massive response or risk going 11 behind the leaders. I signed this guy in the summer to be my rotational left back and to give us a different option for that position. On the other side, we would make another error to concede a third. Why, Montipo, what is your performance, man? At least dive the right way. We did earn one, but before I could think about becoming Le Crew James, Simakin decided to dance around us and get Leipzig's fourth. I was frustrated as all hell, dropping Montipo for the rest of the season, nearly doing the same with Grimal, and seeing us drop 11 points behind Dortmund. In Montipo's place was Jonas Urbe, who improved with more games played. He was bought for 8.5 million. With him and Son at the club, we were able to turn around the form with several narrow victories. 7 wins and 1 draw, leading to a Europa League encounter with Ajax. <laughs> Rule number 1 for European knockouts. Don't rotate your entire team. I had more faith in my squad than I should have because what I witnessed nearly made me type control alt delete. Enter the mess. 
first, Conceição was taking a shot, but it was so crap that it smacked his own teammate in the head. However, it ricocheted into the net. Martijn van Dijk doesn't look too special to me, but instead of getting concussed, he suddenly turned into the next fast dost. The man was able to jump over my taller fullback, once for a goal, and another that missed the net. As the second half went on, I was desperate not to let the game slip. Unfortunately, we allowed the actual tallest man on the pitch to score from a corner, and what I swore is the biggest name I've ever heard, Ferry van den Uwe, grabbed the fourth before the final whistle. I was flabbergasted at how bad we were, and playing my best team in the home tie wasn't enough. This was a massive missed opportunity. Why? Let's have a look at the following rounds. I explained Wolfsburg, who they lost to. Not only that, every single English side were eliminated before the semi-finals. And so were AC Milan. That led to an all-Lisbon final, which Benfica won. So if I didn't overlook Ajax, a European trophy was actually doable. Thankfully, with our good form prior, we were able to bring the point gap down to one and actually pass Dortmund. They went on a poor run, which included the annual loss to Bayern when it really mattered. Leipzig were playing outstandingly, only drawing two matches since our fixture. They added to that on the 28th match day, meaning we could move into first place with a win versus Freiburg. This ray of hope was what we needed, and we Draogo nearly gave us a dream start. Yet, things came to a standstill with nothing happening until the most controversial call of March 19th, 2028. This tackle by Schallenberg would go down in infancy, barely in the box. Far gives a penalty, which Junior Adamo slots in. A pathetic response from us, and a terrible end to this season. We drew to Stuttgart right after, and in a do or die Revier derby, Adiemi would yet again find space and score with his right foot. Our attack shriveled up while Dorman continued to roll on, confirming the Bundesliga title on the penultimate match day. Leipzig were no match in the final run in. The sole positive to all of this was that Bayern missed out on the top four, meaning they'll be playing in the Europa League. Tuchel was sacked, seeing the Bundesliga title curse continue. That being, any manager that wins it eventually gets sacked. Unless if they use the 4 triple too narrow. Now, who will the Bavarians bring in? Wayne Rooney! That would be great. Ah, shit.